Can you imagine just like we have like a 50 foot super kicker out there? 50 foot. But like kicker out there, and we're like, oh yeah, none of us can ride it, but it's sweet. But it <laughs> to has an airbag? airbag. Yeah. It airbag. would be an nice. Airbag. An airbag is sweet. That'd be a waste of $30,000, though. For sure. The it comes is, with a snowmobile. That's the oh, thing. Really? The snowmobile will never be going in the airbag. It'd be everything else you guys own. <laughs> the snowmobile will never get off the ground. All right. Well, anyway, uh, we're going to get this rolling. We're already rolling a, uh, an hour late, which <laughs> our guest today is all too familiar with. He's got to catch a flight in like two hours. So we're going get to this, get this rolling. But thank you guys for watching, viewing, commenting, liking. Everything on the podcast lately has been... It's been Poppin', crazy, dude. Yeah. It's been great. Hopefully, I don't know when this podcast is going live, but hopefully uh, we're going to hit 100K pretty soon here. That'd be pretty sweet. Hit it, hit 100K in a month. It's not bad. That's not bad. So keep running up the subscribe and uh, showing us love. We appreciate it. Between all of us, we read like all the comments too. So let me jump right into it. Let me introduce today's guest. Many of you guys may recognize him from a couple legendary Seaboys videos and trips that we've taken over the years, but our relationship with him goes much deeper and started out oddly corporate. <gasps> so we're going to take this time to interrogate the shit out of him, tell some stories from snowmobiling and dirt biking trips that probably should never see the light of day and quite possibly get him fired from his big boy job. Okay. <laughs> anyway, give a warm welcome to the one and only David McSkinny McKinney. McSkinny! I feel like I need to compose myself after that <laughs> intro. Yeah, no, honestly, it took me a little bit of time to... Uh, to get because I didn't I didn't want to dishonor the name. I uh, you, you did not. But also <laughs> everybody at the office, I'm sorry if this is the last time I ever hear from you guys. Um, <laughs> Are you worried? No filter. Let's go. Really? Oh yeah. All right, let's get into it. So I want to start out by having you kind of explain, give a quick brief on your role at 509, your big boy job, and uh, and then after that we'll get into kind of how we got to meet. But I want I want the viewers and listeners yeah. to kind of understand who you are and what you do. So, as you guys know, as you chat with me more and more, I'm obsessed with snowmobiling. Like, I still ride dirt bikes, do all that stuff, but snowmobiling is what I live for. Grew up in northern Minnesota, so instantly kind of had that Midwest connection, meeting you guys. Same kind of thing. You guys growing up, riding everything, trying to turn it into a profession, and I just continuously chase that dream, and there's a lot of information in between how we got there, but uh, day job to answer your question is... Uh, creative marketing manager at 509, so a lot of athlete sponsorships, a lot of the media side did five of the films, so volume 11 through 15, and then recently we jumped in and started a YouTube series, um, managing all the athletes' locations for those shoots, a lot of the marketing content, the social media side of it. It's I'm kind of in a lot of different locations and running around constantly, but I wouldn't change it for anything. Absolutely love every second of it. So for those that don't know what 509 is, what is it? Everything. Kind of company is Snowmobile, it? helmets, goggles, outerwear, snow pants, jackets, boots, socks, gloves, everything you need to get out and ride, whether you're a trail rider, whether you're a mountain rider, and then also off-road side, dirt biking. Um, you know, if you're a track guy, if you're a single track mountain rider, we kind of covered everything in two wheels and a track. And when it first started, it was just goggles, correct? Yeah, it was just goggles. The founder, Tom, I think he, he was he dropped out of college and he started, he, he sold a software of some sort. I want to say like an antivirus software and took that as a startup money and was passionate about snowmobiling and ran with it and was like, we need a goggle that works. Everything's like super small. You can't see anything. The foam's all crap. You know, it, this was in 2003. And at and that time it was. Yeah, there was nothing out there. There was no other options. And he designed this goggle and just kind of ran with it and hit it hard on the marketing side. And then the turning point was he went to Winter X Games one year and did a booth. And something there just clicked. Like it went from like 10,000 followers on Facebook to like 80,000 in that weekend. From there, he said, hey, you know, we need to get out just goggles. There's more we can produce. And the helmets came, and then the outerwear came, and then now it's head to toe and everything you could possibly need. And, you know, Midwest, East Coast, mountain riders, whatever, there's something for you. So how did you go from small town Minnesota filming snowmobile races to ultimately landing your dream job Dude, across the country? Obsession. Like... <laughs> <laughs> you guys know, small town, Minnesota. I'm from Cloquet, Minnesota. For those of you who don't know, I always just say Duluth, right? Yeah, it's 15 yep. miles west of Duluth. And my dad got me a sled when I was three years old. He brought it in the back of his Jeep Grand Cherokee and didn't tell my mom. My mom was like, 
pissed. He's like, he's going to kill himself on this thing. He can barely walk. Like, he's just learned how to walk, and now you want to stick him on a snowmobile. And I didn't ride it. Looking back at who I am now, I didn't ride it for the first year. I was terrified of it. And now you can't keep me off him, which is ironic. Yeah. And I rode it every day. And, like, people say I've been riding, you know, I've been riding 23 years, and they dabble in it here and there. I've literally, like, Every day when there was snow, riding laps around the house until I was out of gas, and my dad would drive home, and I'd be sitting there, like, freezing, not going, I could go inside and wait for him, right? But I wanted to be on the sled, and he'd top it off a of fuel, he'd go again. And that just escalated into, you know, buying sleds as I got older and riding them and going more places, meeting more people. But then skateboarding, snowboarding, all of that came into my life. And watching skateboard, snowboard films, I kind of found a love photography and a love filming. And we thought we were really good skateboarders. We were terrible. <laughs> we're like, yeah, we're going to get a sponsorship to the local skate shop, you know. And you just, and Evan? Yeah. Dude, Evan, really? bro. Dude, Actually? Evan, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I have so much footage of Evan from, like, 2005 to, like, 10-ish of us, like, Hitting the middle school, the iconic spots everybody has in their town, you know? Yeah. Like the five stair at the middle school. Like, we're going to get that sponsorship, man. And we're, we're terrible, right? So then I'm like, I like snowmobiling more than this. Started to figure out the photography thing more. But it was always one of those things where, like, people are like, what do you really want to do when you get older? It's like, I want to film snowmobiles. But they're like, yeah, well, that's, that's all in the West. Like, what do you really want to do? That, that's what I really want to do. And just kind of stuck with, even my mom got a little concerned for a minute. She's like, David, we support you fully, but like, how do you actually want to make a living? Because <laughs> what, you were just filming Flatland, like hitting drifts? Yeah, anything. Just playing with the camera, learning things. And this was like pre-YouTube, so either you had to know somebody older who'd been doing it to learn how to settings, aperture, shutter speed, all that. You, you don't need to know that. You, I know you guys know. <laughs> we still don't, don't know that. Started. We've been we'll YouTube for five years. But I, I we'll talk about that. your full auto settings later. Hey, they get the job done. Fuck, that gets me going. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> There's no way to learn it. You just had to either meet somebody who was in the industry or figure it out on your own. Yeah, eventually YouTube came out, but I did end up going to college for cinematography and production so learned a lot there but that was more like narrative film based like let's go make an actual movie nobody there i meshed with they were all kind of hipster filmmaker vibe and i'm just motorhead trying to get the degree yeah but uh yeah i just kept following it and started working at the national snowcross circuit going to all the races you know duluth national everything uh lake geneva canterbury all that and so snowcross was like in my blood and started doing a lot of marketing with them on the social media side I had an opportunity to go out west in like 2013 yeah, or 14 when was the first time you snowmobiled out west like how old were dude, you? dude it wasn't that long ago it was like eight years ago only dang yeah and so it was foreign to me and I had an opportunity to go west with uh, Sledhead 24-7. Got invited out there and did my internship out there. And at the time, I met a guy who was working for 509. In hindsight, I don't know how it played out because I met him when I was hammered at the Buffalo Bar in West Yellowstone. Yeah. Like, that was the first impression of somebody from 509. I was like, here's a 20-year-old. I don't even think I was of age. Maybe 21. Okay. And I'm just tossed. And I'm talking with them, and I vaguely remember the conversation, but I must have left like a – decent impression because i get a call like a week later it's like you want to come out to the 509 heli shoot like yeah hell yeah hell yeah yes please and which we need to do again we used to do a shoot end of the year up in canada where we'd rent a helicopter for a day and take the best guys out there and build jumps and everybody would just send huge flips <clears throat> That's so insane. that was like the like the top tier thing in the industry to be a part of can we come if we, let's just spark it up again, yeah, well, dude. It's interesting. Ryan will like, absolutely yeet himself off of a jump for a good heli shot. Sure. So, do you think that's changed a little bit now that drones came out? Like heli shoots now are like the cream of the crop. Like if yeah. you do that, they, there's something cool, badass about them. I feel like they fizzled out for a bit, but now they're coming back. So, like the drone thing got a little stale. Yep, and like, you can't beat the uh, helicopter shadow. Yeah, on the uh, snow. Yeah, it, it's pleasing to have shots of a guy hitting something. There's a chopper buzzing right under him. I never even did a job interview. That was the wild part. You sure you got hired? <laughs> <laughs> well, the guy that I met left like in November of like 2014 or something, and he was supposed to shoot the film. And it's oh, so you can he was the he was the filmer, or one of the filmers. Yeah, he was producing it, editing it, and shooting everything. So you literally replaced him. Well, to leave in November in this industry is like full panic mode for my boss because you can find a million camera guys better than me. I have zero 
you know, issue admitting that. There's a million guys better, but it's hard to find somebody that can use a camera and then ride a snowmobile in the backcountry. That dwindles down to like 0.01%. Tom calls me up, founder of 509, and goes, shit, this guy just left. Can you shoot this film? It was like November. Canceled everything I had planned, moved west to one of our athletes' basements, shot the film, and that was like my resume. Yep. Handed that in and then offered me the job, and it's been history since. He hasn't asked me about my diploma either, ever. Like, <laughs> my, or my yeah, I'm sure my like, why did I even get this? Yeah. So was it, like, surreal for you? Because obviously you were watching the 509 movies, and for those of you watching right now, uh, 509 makes a snowmobile, or well, I guess used to make a uh, one big snowmobile movie after through the whole winter and then drop it in uh, beginning of fall. and yeah, then September-ish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it was, like, pretty big in the snowmobile industry. So to get that call, like, hey, we need you to come and produce this. Like, I'd imagine you were watching those films uh, your entire life growing up, right? Same concept as what you guys are doing. You just have these moments where they're kind of pinch me moments, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially coming from a small rural area. That's when you realize, like, the hard work and determination pays off when all of a sudden something that was a pipe dream comes to life. And then I was out there hanging next to guys I've been watching for 10, 15 years and Still, to this day, I don't, I don't take it for granted. Like, every time with, like, a Brett Turcott or anything or end up at X Games or something, and I watched every single minute of X Games for probably 15 years straight, Yeah, it doesn't get old. And I'm thankful it doesn't because then I need a real reality check and somebody might have to give me a kick in the nads or something to realize that you're becoming a prick. But Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, we even go through the same shit where it's like you, you hate to get tainted or you, you hate to get used to it. Yeah. Because that's almost what – got you there in the first place is like that passion and drive and ambition, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I don't want to lose what got me here in the first place. And I've watched you guys from early subscribers to now. And there are moments when much as you hate to admit it, you can get desensitized to things. Yeah. But then like walking in here, it was my first time at your new shop. And I, that was one of those moments where I was like, guys, look what you've done. This is rad. Like you were, slinging shirts in your mom's attic yeah <laughs> not that long ago a lot of people don't understand our relationship and how we no, how either. we came to be friends <laughs> and, and i i stated in your intro that it started out pretty corporate so we had like 140,000 subscribers at the time and maybe had like one winter worth of yeah i think it was our videos. second winter going yeah. in and David reached out to actually CJ, <laughs> which is funny. I, I, I don't remember what you said, but I think you were just like, hey, do you guys want some 509 helmets? And we were like, yeah. I think what? I reached out to CJ because he didn't have a 509 helmet. He had that old Fox, Fox helmet. helmet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I noticed you guys did. I'm like, hey, you should help this guy out. <laughs> and so that's how David came into our life. You were the first person to take a, a, a chance on us when we were smaller. Like you were the first like brand to really see potential in, in a group of guys that are so stupid right. and they do the <laughs> randomest shit, but they're entertaining. Right. And you saw that from, from a business standpoint of like, oh, I think that they could, you know, help promote our brand right. and, and uh, you know, get the people wearing helmets, get the people wearing 509 goggles. To this day, we still talk about it all the time how you, you were the first guy to see that in us. It sparked something in us when we were like, oh, shit, brands actually do care. Yeah. Do you remember that? How did you run across just say, us? What did you think of us at first? You played into it well because the story I just told, like that's what I saw. It was like watching myself all over again almost. I was just at the point where I was getting comfy at my job and had that pinch me moment, right? And I came across, it was your Sealy Lake video, like It's Too Deep, mm -hmm. that video. I mm -hmm. remember that was the one and I was watching it and I was like, man, these guys kind of suck at riding, but like I'm really, <laughs> I'm really into the vibes about this front to back. And then I dug deeper into the channel. I'd seen some stuff prior to that, but it was all your summer stuff and dinking around with cars and drifting around Jake's dad's shop and all that stuff. But uh, it was really just like Minnesota bred guys doing the same thing I did growing up and consistently hustling. And I kind of saw like there was a glimmer of this could go somewhere. And I think right when I like refreshed, I want to say like a week later, I circled back. You guys had gained like 10,000 subs. Like it was right in that bubble where you start taking off. Yeah. I'm like other people are definitely seeing this also. And then we chatted at Heydays, I think. It was the first time. But I, I remember you guys were like, you know, me a couple of years ago, 
kind of like schoolgirl fan, like fanboying out when I, we were chatting at the 509 booth. Definitely. That was oh, like, yeah. I'd followed, I'd followed you on Instagram for like three years prior to that. And then I met you and I go, that's what he looks like. <laughs> Never seen him. Scrawny looking <laughs> Scandinavian yeah, I was kid. Not expecting that. <laughs> I'm at always all. sunburnt, yeah. even when it's cloudy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Heydays was the first time we met. So Heydays is like this snowmobile event in Minnesota. And uh, biggest in the world. Yeah, it's big, biggest yeah. in the world. It's crazy. Yeah. How many people? Like 100,000 people? It's a lot. Nuts. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's a part where there's booths set up for businesses, which is probably half of it. And then the other half of it is like campgrounds. And for our C Boys booth at the time, <laughs> we set it up in the middle of the campgrounds. And we were just like, this is what aisle we're in. If you guys are at Heydays, come say what's come up. Take I think pictures, we threw a flag up about it. Buy t shirts. Yeah. And I was like, I'm gonna roll the dice on these guys. Yeah, no, it's crazy though <laughs> to look back at. It. And then, and then, heydays the year after was a little bit bigger. I think we got pushed to the edge of yeah, the uh, yeah. of the business booth section. And then the year after that, obviously, we were in it, and it was insane. We had yeah. like an eight hour line. So when was that? Was that 17? So yeah, mm-hmm. it must have been because three three yeah. years ago or four years ago. Yeah, time flies. Time flies. That's yeah. crazy, dude. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just so curious how. You saw us at low subscribers, and we were, like, so reckless, and we weren't brand-friendly at all. And I'm not saying that we are still, but, <laughs> like, you didn't care about that. You never did, which was great. That's why we love you guys so much is you've never tried to put us in a box and, and try and, yeah. you know, tell us what we can and can't do. I think it helped that we we were into the brand before we'd met you, yeah, before we met too. anyone. So it's like we would never want to do anything that would, like, even accidentally taint it or anything. We were just stoked. We were both stoked. That yeah. was a funny thing. Because yeah. I was into what you guys were doing, and you guys were into what we were doing. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just instantly like, this is perfect. A lot of people weren't stoked, though. <laughs> a lot of people weren't stoked. A lot of people didn't think that, you know, a couple of YouTube kids should be Oh, sponsored. we're going to talk about the hate sponsored. comments. I've read and there's plenty not, of those. Yeah, like, there's not as many as you may think, but there was plenty. Yeah, because they're like, fizzled off. Suck at riding. Funny thing. We're like... We're the first people to admit we suck at riding. We're not snowmobilers. We're YouTubers. And you'd say that. Yeah. You, would, you would address everybody and just yeah. say, That's, we're not professionals. Yeah. And people still got worked up about it. Did you have people at 509 that thought that? They're like, why are we dealing with these kids? No. So so Tom, the founder, president, still working there. Maybe a year afterwards, he like pulled me aside. He's like, where'd you find these guys? I'm like, kind of told him the story. He goes, is there, is there more of them? Like, <laughs> like, can we find another group like this? I understood where he's coming from, but I'm like, no, 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 we're just keeping these. It's like, I don't want others. And these are perfect. And so he was like on board from like year one after he saw how it went. But no, it, the hate comments for a while there were comical, but it, it like phased out after you guys established yourself a bit more and people kind of figured out. I think it was guys that like never watched your videos and only saw something we'd post with you. Mm-hmm. And they dive into your page and be like, why the heck do these guys get a deal? And I sent in 12, you know, sponsor applications and these dudes get it. And now I think people kind of figured out what you're about. And it's, yeah. I don't ever want to label like you guys like influencers in a sense. I mean, that's part of your role for sure. But you're more of like just action sports advocates is kind of what I look at. Well, we're yeah, just way, personalities that yeah. fit. But that's why I always appreciate you will always go to bat for us. Obviously, you run a lot of the social media accounts for 509, but like you'll always go, no, they're with us because they're stoked on the sport. And they're stoked about everything that we're doing. Like, how, how could we say no to that? I like the term advocate. Yeah, I do too. That's nice. It's probably the nicest term I've <laughs> ever labeled you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Athletes don't prioritize social media as much as they should. And we almost caught the wave of, you know, we're only social media. Mm-hmm. We're only personalities. And at the end of the day, we're going to sell a lot more helmets than an athlete will. Yeah. No offense to the athletes listening, but like, you know, they're only getting in front of so many people. It's a new generation. You guys are right in the middle of it, like the changing of the guard. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a weird thing to watch because there's guys that have been doing this for 15, 20 years that are legends. But it's just the reality of where media is going. Yeah, I mean, it's no disrespect. zero zero discredit to any of those guys. I mean... That's just what's in now in the, in the direction everything is headed in. And you guys saw that right before I think it kind of took off and a bunch of other people tried to kind of mimic it and started doing the same thing. And as far as what I saw, people reaching out to me saying, hey, I got a channel here, I got a TikTok channel here. 
And there's a lot of like similarities in what you guys are doing. And I feel you guys kind of sparked that, at least in the snow and moto industry. You kind of drove that for a while. Yeah, moto's still a lot different because I think the moto industry is, is so much bigger. Yeah. So much bigger. Like, what do you think the percentage of snowmobiling is to motocross? Think about where you can ride a sled in the world. Versus. It's limited, right? right? right. And then on top of being limited, it's only X amount of months out of a year. Yeah. And then all those places that you can ride a sled, you can also ride a bike during those other months. Yeah. So, I I mean, you're probably talking, what, 20% of the whole world maybe gets snow? I don't know the stat on that. So, I mean, it's millions and millions and millions of motorcycles out there. So, snowmobiling is a sliver. It's definitely a niche market. Yeah, But it's really, like tight knit everything yeah. we all share the same followers mm-hmm. and you kind of you can definitely plateau in the snow industry so that's why you got to continuously think outside the box and try and you know rope somebody new and that's never seen it and it's like i gotta try that yeah we run into that a lot with uh with our audience obviously i think we did hit a cap of there's only so many people in the snowmobiling industry on youtube and our demographic that are going to watch our videos so when we go out and and film a snowmobile video, especially on the mountain trips when we drive 12, 15 hours, mm. you know, get a cab and spend all this money for lodging and, and gas and food. And and then you make a video that gets, you know, 50% as many views as a video of us literally filming anything else like home. Like it's it, that's hard to justify because the snowmobile industry yeah. is small and, and granted but the tough part is you, you guys love doing it too that's that's, that's, that's the thing that's what part. that's like, the hardest part is actually like our favorite thing, yeah almost <laughs> at the end of the day if we do it completely for fun and we don't even film it that's almost harder than mm-hmm. than just because you know, well, then that, it's like oh there's this no is way so sick there's i just want to no film way this, i you know? could take a snowmobiling trip and not film it there's not a chance it's just too fun yeah. and i get there's a difference between i could definitely take a snowmobiling trip and just film the cool shit and be lazy about it. Cause that's what you like when you actually have to go make a full feature vlog, basically then it gets, it gets to be a lot. Yeah. It's also hard. It's really hard to vlog on a snowmobiling trip because your batteries are dying. You got to lug a camera around There's with no you. You're wet. Your There's no oxygen. You're, you're wet. Not you're wet. cold. You must be not layering correctly. You want to okay. talk about layering? No, damn it. No, 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 <laughs> no, wet. no cotton <laughs> talk. No cotton talk. <laughs> But no. David, you know that better than anybody. Like filming in the winter, especially in the backcountry, bringing all your gear, yeah. making sure it doesn't break or die. There's so many damn variables. Yeah. yeah. Everything. Weather, wind, snow depth, elevation. And for you guys to pull it off, I mean, you've come a long way you're riding. First couple of times you guys were kind of just, you know, goons. Yeah. We stuck we every, just, I yeah. stuck everywhere all the time. And now you guys are rippers. And because of that, I think it's made filming a lot easier for you. But I remember the first couple trips, you guys were like on your deathbed and it was a struggle to even make a video mm-hmm. just because of all those variables. And yeah. now you're a bit more conditioned and Ben finally put on a couple pounds and <laughs> maybe looking, too many. He's looking <laughs> healthy. I mean, and, and not even necessarily got a hit back at you because that wasn't a hit at us, but you started out a good snowmobiler. No, and, I was bad. In the or let's yeah, like let's really say bad. bad. You should you, talk to some of our athletes. You're stuck chasing after professional snowmobilers. And trial now fire. we're definitely the ones having to chase you because you're you just cruise now. Well, I <laughs> did not for a while. There's a couple riders that like probably wanted to call Tom the first few times I was out with him. Like, like let's get rid of this kid. <laughs> Send him back to Minnesota, get him back on his trail sled. Because he's slow. It was bad. I went through, I had an XM that I had like 4,500 miles on and zero maintenance at all. Put zero maintenance into that snowmobile. And the suspension was blown out. It was down like 1,000 RPMs. I rode it for a whole season. I took it to Barant's at like 12,000 feet. And that was the moment I think Chris Barant like was – really skeptical on who we hired so i understand that but it's seat time with anything you know yep. like you guys i can't lift the front tire off a bike to save my life and you guys are dragging hands doing wheelies everywhere never i mean do that. on pit bikes <laughs> yeah still i'm never gonna do that but it's just anything you know seat time and practice and constantly Dude, being thrown into the fire i remember you saying i don't even like riding dirt bikes and you're like, yeah, maybe, maybe I do like it a little, but you're like, I literally just do it because I miss snowmobiling and it's the same crowd and it's mm-hmm. the same type of adrenaline. But you're like, I really don't even like it that much. I don't like summer. Yeah. No, I live for winter. How, I many, will, how many days do you spend on the snow? 70, between, 
I don't know. It depends on the season. Somewhere between 60 to 80. Dude, that's nuts. It's like 2,500 miles in the mountains probably, which mountain miles, that's a lot. You can do trail miles, no problem, but 2,500 in a mountain is, your sleds are absolutely hammered by the end of the season. I think my, I think my sled had like 200 miles on it at the end of the season. Yeah. And they still get hammered. Yeah. 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 It's the wear and tear is amplified big time. Like mountain riding, for those of you that have never done it, is quite honestly dangerous as fuck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Insanely dangerous. Like you, you, there's so much that you have to take in from, you know, snow conditions for avalanches to other riders. Where, where are other riders? Are they stuck? I got to make sure that we don't lose them. Like there's so much going on so you spend 70 days on the snow I, like i can't imagine how many like sketchy things that you've gotten into and and ravines that you've dropped into and you're like oh shit i'm not sure if i can get out of this uh avalanches for sure is the number one thing and last winter in particular was awful yeah yeah i mean i've seen a lot cut off by guys at landing hitting jumps and massive three-foot crown and a 500 foot wide avalanche that makes you never want to ride a snowmobile again dude i hear about them and i don't even ride want to ride a snowmobile again yeah that that's the number one terrifying thing but um losing your buddies out there not having a radio dead radio and 99 percent of the time everybody's fine but you have that panic moment because there's there's horror stories of guys being they're like i'm gonna go ride over here for a second and they're underneath their sled and the suffocate to death and it's like holy shit that could happen to any of us you know me i mean just with you guys how many m- times have you done one maneuver where you're kind of stuck and you're in a situation that you're like this isn't the best and that happens every single day and every single season somebody goes out that way that seat time just keeps playing and nobody's invincible but you understand how to get away from search- certain situations and like assess the terrain and tackle it in the, the safest manner you can but Nobody's invincible. I've had fair share of close calls, and I've seen a lot of really close calls. I, I mean, if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. But the story of your of your buddy without the tether, yeah, like that had to have fucking yeah, like that one was sucked. gnarly. That was the worst day I've ever had snowmobiling by yeah. far. Most snowmobiles come with a tether. For you guys that don't know, it's it's just a a, a line attached from you to the snowmobile as a key. You fall off, it pulls out, and the snowmobile dies. Motor shuts off, no power. And some sleds don't come with them from the factory, and I always installed them. Number one thing, tell every guy, have a tether, have a tether. And, yeah, we were out riding one day, doing some R&D, actually, just doing some product stuff for 509, testing some gear. I had a guy that was from the Midwest who worked for 509, and he's learning how to mountain ride. He's learning how to set his ski on edge and do a side hill, just getting the fundamentals down. And I remember looking back, there was kind of like a, a hill that rolled over the top here. And I remember glancing back and I saw him lose his edge. So he went from riding side hill and he went to like neutral position. So both skis are on the ground and he's fighting the thing. So it's going downhill. And I crest over the edge and I hear this, this shriek that is unhuman, like, like, like a pack of wolves is the best way to describe it. Something that no human should make in my my heart sank because I feel like I knew what was happening. There was no avalanche danger right there. There was no trees around. I, I saw where he was, and I had a feeling I knew exactly what was happening. So I turned around, and I bombed up there, and he, the sled had rolled upside down. And the throttle was stuck in the snow, completely pinned wide open. And when he rolled over, the track had started spinning and sucked him in between the back of the snowmobile and the track. And it was wide open on his leg, like 8,000 RPMs. And so I bailed off, and I just dig in for the kill switch to shut the thing off and smack the kill switch, and I looked at it. And at this point, I couldn't even see him because the belt blew. There was so much heat, the belt blew, and so the sled is billowing with smoke. My first thought is, like, fuck, it's on fire, and he's stuck in this thing. First thing I did was open up the side panel before anything and make sure the sled's not on fire. And the belt's like liquid. It was so hot, just dripping goo and everything steaming. And so threw a handful of snow in there just to you know, make sure while we're assessing this, he's not going to burst into flames on top of everything that's happening. And I look at him and I'm like, are you okay? Like, can you, can you move your toes? Can you wiggle your knee? Make sure he's got feeling and everything. He's like, yeah. But I mean, I mean he's in the sled completely. So when I got to him, like this arm is out and his head and the tunnel's, like, right here. Like he's fully in the snowmobile. And I, 
He's like, dude, I gotta, I gotta pull you out of here. We gotta get you out of this. There's two more guys down at the bottom of the hill, but they're not mountain riders, so they couldn't get up to us. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta get you out, and then I'm gonna run down and get those guys. So, put my arms under his armpits and just said, dude, this is gonna fucking hurt, but like, we gotta get you out. Give him a pull and yank him out, and that's when I saw his leg, and it was bad. It was, I don't know how descriptive you want me to get, but. I'm I'm looking at exposed bone at that point and realizing that this is really a bad situation. Like below his knee? Yeah, so like the calf the calf muscles like gone. And I'm looking around the snow and realizing what's in the snow and it's pieces of yeah. his leg. And I'm like, "All right, just take a deep breath, take a deep breath." I dig in my bag what I have with me at a first aid kit and wrap them up as best I can and bomb down to get one of the other guys. I throw them on my sled, ride them up to comfort him. And uh, it's like, how do you want to get out of here? Like, do you need a helicopter? And we kind of assessed he's not bleeding out. He's, he's good. He's not losing a lot of blood. So I kind of build a, a shelf so I don't have to side hill him because I didn't want to bump him. I didn't want to lose it and then roll the sled riding with him double. Like, that's the last thing I want to do is make this even worse for him. So we get him down to the trail and he's like, I'm going to ride out. Like, you're going to what? He's pale, so pale, like just white. He's like, yeah, I just, there's no faster way to get out of here. Even if we wanted a helicopter, it couldn't have come in. It was so cloudy out. They wouldn't have been able to land, so that was on the back burner. How far out were you? Uh, 14 miles from the truck. Long, an uncomfortable distance. Yeah. And I made the mistake that day of not having my sat phone on me. I always carry a, a GPS that I can call search and rescue on. Because we were just going to do a trail cruise, just something tame. So I bombed down to the parking lot where I knew there was service and called uh, 911. And so they got somebody there. By the time I there, I met the guy, and I threw him on the sled. I threw the EMT on my sled, and they were about halfway back at this point. They, they had put him on a snowmobile. There's three sleds in a row, like, taking up the whole trail, and he was in the middle, and they were just barely moving. So if he passed out... And went left or right, they could like block him in and make sure he wasn't. Oh, gonna... he was riding his. Yeah, he rode out. He rode out. So, what was we... he doing with his leg? It was just wrapped up and, and not moving it. He was just sitting and looking straight ahead, concentrating on getting the hell out of there. <laughs> so I come flying back with the EMT, and uh, the guy's like, "Is everything good?" And he, he assesses it. He goes, "He's not losing much blood. If, if he's comfortable right now, let's just keep doing what we're doing." It's like, there's nothing I can do out here on the snowmobile trail as far as getting you back faster. Yeah. Get him back, get him in the ambulance, carries on. I get an update that night. Like, how's he doing? I, you know, I knew it was bad. I, didn't, I knew it was going to be a life-altering handicap, but I didn't realize it was going to get as bad as kind of what came of it. And they go, yeah, he might, they might have to amputate it. I'm like, what? Why? His what? whole leg or knee down? Knee down. Like, why? Well, they go, well... When you saw the bone exposed there, did you notice all the black marks on it? I was like, yeah. He's like, that was the rubber of the track that essentially did a burnout. So that friction, he actually went through the main artery in his leg, and there was so much friction, it cauterized it on the spot. Otherwise, he would have bled out and been gone right there. No. There was that much friction right there. Sealed it up, done deal. So in a way that saved his life. It, it did. But. And there was like hardly <clears throat> any blood. That was the thing I was noticing. I'm like, how is there no blood? And, and like, it was pretty clean. Cauterized it right there on the spot. Holy Jeez. shit. But the concern was it got so hot that it might have killed the marrow in the bone. Six surgeries later, he's walking. You wouldn't even guess it. Obviously, if he's got shorts on, he's got a gnarly scar and one hell of a story. Yeah. But um, he's riding his motorcycle. He's riding snowmobiles. He's loving life. Wow. He doesn't have a handicapped parking spot. Like, he parks wherever. He can walk, you know, all day long. But uh, moral of the story is always wear your tether. And I see it on social media all the time. Guys, let, there's dangle in there. And it can happen to anybody. I never thought it would happen. But, dude, eye-opening, terrifying experience. But having the right stuff in your pack, making sure you got a first aid kit, somebody that you trust that's going to stay calm and not panic, like, it was gnarly, but there was a lot of things that happened that day that worked out for him, and that's why he's here today. Damn. I that, know. That was a heavy story. Insane. I'm really yeah, sorry oh, if anybody's, like, down and out right now and terrified to go ride this winter, but it's 
preventable. That's, I think that's it's the thing. preventable. Yeah. It's it, preventable. It is, but it's just part of the game. Like those are the things that you need to know. People don't talk about that. People don't talk mm, about it. Pretty gnarly. People from Minnesota don't talk about the danger of avalanches and how yeah. fast you can just fucking disappear. Yeah, we've been riding mountains for like I don't know six years at this point, and like just in the past couple winters have like really had some eye opening, mm-hmm. you know, conversations with people of like, oh, do you have this on you at all times? Is is, is are you guys doing beacon checks? Um, are you guys charging your bags? Like there's so much that goes into it where you can just forget about it and then yeah. that's the day that it goes wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you just gotta have that checklist and make sure you go through it every single day. No matter how excited you are, if it's the deepest day ever, it's so easy to overlook and just want to get in the snow, but it's it's not worth it. You guys want to talk about partying now? Yeah, I mean, no, geez. that's that's <laughs> heavy. That's heavy. Um, <laughs> damn. So, yeah, I mean, to lighten the mood, bro, <laughs> we've taken so many trips together at this point. Keep this Probably emotional we, roller coaster going. We have taken so the many memorable trips. Like, easily at my most memorable trips are with you. And they're 100%. all... That, that they're humbles all me because I watch so many videos. I'm like, ah, man, I wish I was there for that. That looked like fun. We have a lot of fun when we're together. And they're all filmed, and we, we create amazing content, and, and so many of the trips are, like, absolute banger videos, but it's what happens off camera that's almost more entertaining mm. than what happens on. I mean, where do you want to start? <laughs> I want to start with Revelstoke. Yeah, I was going to say, let's go Revelstoke. Let's just dive deep. Okay, so Revelstoke, British Columbia, it's like the snowmobiling capital of the world. It's also just incredible. the greatest place in the world. And we just yeah. so happen to find out that it, it's quite possibly the best city ever yeah. to ever be in existence, mostly because of like the, the nightlife, mm-hmm. and everyone's just... Stoked. Everyone's just everyone's stoked, stoked and everyone's just hammered. Everybody's just crossed. Right? <laughs> everyone's <Yeah>. so <laughs> drunk. They warned us about it going into it. They were like, no, Revelstoke, like, we do it different there. Holy that, shit, did we find out we do it different there? And it's like everywhere you look, you're seeing <laughs> legit pro <laughs> snowmobilers, but they're exceeding our level of... Of what we're like, oh yeah, we could party. I know Ben's like, like, oh no, <laughs> Ben's introing this, and my gears are turning. I'm like, man, there's a lot of different things that have happened there. I mean, we'll start. Sh- we'll start this out. We find out about this drink. It's called a shaft shot. Mm, my God. And it's uh, it's basically coffee with alcohol in it, but it's just straight espresso. No, I, no. So it comes in a. <laughs> oh, here, let me give you the science on this. I've had a lot of them. So it comes in a glass about yay high, probably what eight ten ounce glass. You got to take it as a shot, though, through a straw. It's a shot of Bailey's, Kahlua, vodka, and espresso. So it's three shots of alcohol and then a shot of caffeine straight to the, straight to the heart. Something you crack. Probably yeah. only have crack. one of, you know? Yeah. No, you should take one. You definitely should. You, yeah, you but should we took like five. Take one. Yeah. yeah, you should. Yeah. So and it's like... just rippered. Yeah. Before you know it, it's 5 a.m. That's the thing about it. And you're wandering, That's it right you're there. wandering around Revelstoke. Yeah. It goes from... 10 o'clock, we rode all day. I'm tired, you know? And then you have, like, one shaft shot. You're like, I'm feeling it. And then you have two, and you're like, let's watch the sunrise today. Yeah. <laughs> then you, like, come back in, and you're bowling, but with the weird little bowling balls at yeah. the bowling alley. Yeah. Then you're at the Canadian, traverse. Canadian viewers, what, what the hell's up with that? You guys do not have regulation size bowling but at all. But it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. But it's just caught me off guard Super the first weird. time. Okay, so this story isn't really about you, but it's about Revelstoke, and mm-hmm. I've always... I just want... I just want people to know this story, and I'm sorry, but it's oh uh, my gosh, <laughs> yeah, it's at, the, all, it's at the butt all, end of my. Yes. It is, but this all just depends on how you tell it. If Ben tells it and exaggerates and lies, no, 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 it's gonna no. be pretty no, damn no, embarrassing. No, no, no. Pretty hard to exaggerate that one because that all really happened. It Dude. really did happen. Yeah. No, bro, we're at a we we end up at a punk rock concert. It's actually a ska band, if you if you know what that is. But no we're idea. at a punk rock concert. In Revelstoke, this guy's got Liberty Spikes on, and we're, he's playing the trumpet on the stage. It was set the mood. so lit. He had on, like, the clout goggles, and he was playing trumpet, <laughs> jumping from, like, table to table. And Ryan's dad's there with us. We're playing all, Pong. Playing Pong, pong. With, with, like, 21-year-old <laughs> girls. We were like, damn, Ryan, I think Randy's going to bring more chicks home than you. Amazing. It was a phenomenal night. So next thing we know, there's this dude there. <laughs> And he's, and he's kind of just wandering around aimlessly. And next thing we know, him and Mike hit it off. See, now you're already lying. 
We, no, what? We didn't, we didn't hit it off. <laughs> yeah, you guys definitely hit it you off. You were talking though. for like twenty minutes. You didn't minutes. even speak real words to me. How do you hit it off with someone? You weren't can't either. Speak though, like, so. you weren't either. <laughs> you guys are just holding each other and just staring into each other's eyes. No. Well, <laughs> yes. No. This is, no. This is this yes. is happened. Yeah. This dude was holding Mike, and well, I should say Mike was holding him. Actually, caressing him. Actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. That that did not happen. And this dude goes in for the kiss. <laughs> And he definitely did not try to yes, kiss me. Yes, he did, bro. I'm just yes, going to pull up the right, videos. Right, you got to just we play the watch video. The video but it's like, I, I lived it. Would you, I lived it. Would you like to go on the record saying he did not try to kiss you? Yes. Okay, here it is. We'll let the comments decide. I'll, I'll put it in. I'll, this looks like they're hitting it off. It yeah, looks it's... bad that I'm getting defensive, but it's like, bro. <laughs> oh, man, there's a lot of videos. For oh, yeah, there's, there's a ton. Oh, uh, no. Does this look like two people hitting it off? They're chopping it up. <laughs> look at them chopping up right there. Laughing. <laughs> Look at him He's chopping it up Oh yeah <laughs> I, I, I chop it up with all you guys then uh, Yeah <laughs> and, we, oh, oh. and we're hitting it off dude We're friends Alright okay And ear Oh this is the guy playing guitar Who knows what's gonna be in this I think he's standing on the Oh no he's just in the oh, There he is there. He was on the bar later <laughs> that night I miss that guy There's also a video of Jake standing there Talking to a couple people, and we were with our buddy Kyle, and Kyle goes, hey, film this. And he goes up, and he pants Jake in front of this entire group of people. But he, gra I, he grabbed it all. Yeah, I had boxers <laughs> and all, everything. I, yeah, he grabbed it and all. somehow I, we didn't I, get kicked out. I thought it was the funniest thing, right? And I filmed it, and I thought there was, I thought there was no shaft. Yeah, and then you put it in your I story. I put it on my story. <laughs> I wake up in the morning. I... Lots I, of responses. Yeah, I definitely. And, and a weird amount of I definitely screenshots. posted a video of Jake's dick on my yeah, story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it took us a few hours to realize that it actually happened. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That first frame. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so good. It's <laughs> 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 All right. Maybe I did exaggerate a little bit, but if you. Hold up. Uh, it goes in for it. There's another one. I have no, one across. You gotta go frame by frame yeah, to really back. get the full effect. Yeah, there it was. All right, so it starts, <laughs> it starts out with a good, just a good hug. Just a good bro hug. And then, and then, right that, here. That was right it. here. This is where I thought I was capturing gold. It goes in for it. It might kind of might pulls back there for a minute. The guy, you can see his hands go like, oh, what, bro? What? <laughs> So you don't want to kiss? But didn't he no. ask you? I thought you said something like he brought a, like the topic up. I don't think so. I all I know is that he was all I know is that he was uh he was on drugs. Yeah, we later and found so, out that the guy was high on PCP or something, something like that. He looked at some dude's dick in the bathroom and ended up and getting punched in the face. Yeah, it was a whole night. And then we ended up getting kicked out because the, the bouncer was like What do you guys do? He doing? was all cracked out. I remember that? that? No, I, that was the night I don't remember, to oh. be honest. Yeah, David, you also got drunk that night. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. Revelstoke, crazy. The riding's pretty fun, too. <laughs> I was like, it was deep as balls. Yeah. And Ben and I were on snow bikes, and David hates snow bikes. I don't hate No, he doesn't hate I thoroughly hate dislike. I would choose a snowmobile but any day, is in, what I would say. In that deep conditions, it did. It sucked ass. It was, like, so hard to move. Revelstoke is only at, like, what, 5,500 feet? Yeah, you ride at 5,000-ish yeah, or so. so you have tons of power and tons of snow, and it's just like you can't beat it. So, but combine that, drained, riding all day, deep snow, and then you just pull all nighter, night after night there. Somehow we kept going, except for that one day. Who ended up going? Was that you? I did. You I went, went and, and I got McDonald's for everybody. We had the best sunset. You and Trent were so hungover, you switched That's helmets the entire day. Yeah, so... <laughs> We always make the noon crew joke, right? You go in at noon, noon crew. It we just, make the noon crew joke. No, 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 you no. You hate no. us for it. No, because you stole it from me. And then you put it on a t-shirt, and I got zero royalties out of that. I don't so, know if I'd go that far. <laughs> so we went out at noon, which is fine in March, because it's light out till 8 o'clock. But noon in December is like a three-hour window of light. And for some reason, we committed to going riding after heavily, heavily drinking the night before. And all day long, I ride take a bunch of photos we're like it's a good photo op day we get back and like a week later i'm going through the photos and i realize that whole day i was so hung over i wore trent's helmet and trent wore my helmet and we didn't notice the whole day until i saw a photo so that means we took the gear off put it in the bags and everything and it still didn't dawn on us that's yeah. when you know you had a good time though yeah yeah that was yeah. that was great that's just a drop in the bucket though another uh party night that comes to mind 
it wasn't on that trip, but it was when we were at Uncle Sane's. Mm-hmm. And we had that Airbnb rented. And it, it was, was a two nice it was, it was a big it was a nice house. It was too yeah. nice for but us. it was it was a two story Airbnb and it had this little stairway that went downstairs <laughs> that just so happened to be the perfect spot to pour beer out from the top <laughs> from the top floor to the people below laying on our backs. I kinda wanna backtrack a little and talk about Ryan's style of riding a snowmobile. <laughs> And kind of where the mindset is. Wide open until something stops me. You are the only person I know that can get countless GoPro clips of hitting the only tree <laughs> on a hillside time and time again. Mm-hmm. You know you can not do that. It's quality content. Is it? Let's, let's be honest here. Is it for no, the content? It or is are you not. genuinely just that out of control? I sometimes suck, and then sometimes I'm good. Normally, if I turn a camera on or someone's filming me, I tend to suck mm-hmm. a lot. And... and to be fair, we do film the difficult parts where it's like, hey, True. you might end up in this tree, so we should probably film this. Yeah, you like look mm-hmm. at a hill that we've torn up like 10 times, like, all right, go hit it. And I'm like, well, I got to do something cool for the camera, and then yeah. I fall. He's just really good at executing on the you might part. Mm-hmm. Right. It, it's you will for Ryan. Yeah. At yeah. first, we did, call, you know, the typical, oh, what do you go to tree magnet in your sled? But mm-hmm. then we're like, dude. Do you you actually have a tree (laughs) magnet in your sled? Maybe this year I'll keep this snowmobile out of the trees. Last year was too far gone. I had a turbo, didn't know how to ride it. That's still the insane part. I know we have talked about this on a video, but Ryan went from riding skidoos his entire life Mm -hmm. and and also was on a finger throttle like on his later years of the skidoo and then put a turbo on an axis with the thumb throttle, a snowmobile you've never, ever, ever ridden and then just threw you into the fire. Yeah, it's no wonder I said. Zero miles, right? You did all that. Zero miles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We put the turbo on Revelstoke. Yeah, yeah. Revelstoke. Mm-hmm. Nobody helped me, you, but we did. You concerned? Yeah, we I watched. Did it in like an hour and a half. Yeah, you guys just were I hammered. think you did good. It you were hammered. No, Trent was. Yeah. I think we were, yeah. yeah. Can you briefly explain? I mean, you guys have seen Trent on the videos. Oh, man. Um, and Trent's from Michigan. I'm not even sure how you know him. Just a piece of shit, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> God, I hate Trent. He's out feeding America every day, and then somehow he's roped himself into hanging out. Yeah, uh, he'll come with you on the trips, and... He will take phenomenal photos for you. Sometimes not phenomenal, but and then just feed them all to you. That's why I love actually taking or taking trips with you and Trent. So we get all of our like uh, funny mess around content. We get our, all our own videos too. And then you and Trent get like cinematic, just beautiful buttery shots. And then when we get to sit down and produce the snowmobile films or whatever videos, the best. Yeah, it's like the best combination of of shenanigans and cinematic shots. And I'm kind of bummed. I know we all got busy this year and dropped the ball, but we didn't do anything this summer. And I saw some comments about that. We need to do a moto trip again. That was a blast. We definitely need one good sled video. But I don't know we got to think a little outside the box. I don't know how we can amplify it from what we've done, but there needs to be a little extra wow factor in there. Whether it's watching the sunrise in Revelstoke after. 18 shaft shots, if we really want to dive into that. Or Micah on a late night venture. We need something. Something Micah in there. on a late night adventure? Well, well there was one even, night at... You know, that oh, Snapchat not, video we just watched. Not, that's, oh, yeah. That would yeah. not consist of my late night adventures. I had to leave homie down the road, you know? <laughs> uh, but one night, in, to go home one night in Revelstoke, like, I didn't even... I was just like, I'm having too much fun. You guys just leave. And you're like, this is your first night here. You've never... You, do you know what you're doing? And I'm like, nope. I'll find a way home. Dude, okay. Speaking of uh, trips also, last time we went to Gold Creek, we got in a little bit of trouble. Oh, you want to oh. talk about that? I mean, Should we? it's interesting. Yeah. It was a, like, honest mistake, though. It it's, was a signing I don't think it's mistake. bad to explain because, like, I, we weren't trying to be malicious in any way. I, I, yeah, I think we talk about it just so people are aware, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, so we we go to this place called Gold Creek, Idaho, every year. It's a It's a dirt biking place some of the best riding in the world single track we were riding down this trail looking at this massive mountain next to us and we're like hey we should go up that just but, like we do but, just like we do on For the record there was tracks going oh there was up tracks there. Up yeah. Yeah. exactly yeah yeah we were like hey let's go up that that'd be a sick view so we do that and we film it it was a great it was great content phenomenal view we dropped the video a year goes by <laughs> we get a call Actually, no, we get an email. A pretty aggressive email. Pretty aggressive email. <laughs> and it was from uh, National Forest Service <laughs> saying that they were going to fine us for riding off trail and not ha- having a film permit. Yeah, and to contact us now. Yeah, otherwise we're going to jail. Yeah. We were like, 
David, is this a thing? <laughs> well, but it only started with a few of you, and then they somehow continuously like tracked all of us down. Yeah, it like, yeah. took a week or so, but then we all got the email. Because at first we're like, nah, it's probably just a joke. They're like, probably like not that serious about it. <laughs> it's like, who's gonna call? Are you gonna call? Who's gonna call back? Like, do you want to do it? I'm like, I don't want to do it. It's a weird feeling having to call, like almost like calling yourself in. Oh, by the way. Uh, it's me, Micah. I'm ready for that ticket now. <laughs> <laughs> so long story short, we, you know, had a conversation with the National Forest Service about what we ha- what we did. And we were like, quite honestly, I didn't even know that that was a rule. So mm-hmm. for those of you guys watching right now, it's, yeah, it's a rule. Can't ride off trail. I mean, I knew, right? Oh, I but didn't know. What was misleading was the amount of people that had ridden there. And any of us can fall for that. Like, it looked like it was a trail. So mm-hmm. many people had cut off there. And the signage in the first place is non-existent. So yeah. we made a mistake, and, and we ended was, up paying $280 for it. I did get a sweet oh, office decoration. Oh. <laughs> oh. I started framing my tickets for oh, this $230, sorry. 230 bucks. So if you want some artwork for your walls, But it was, keep in mind, it was 230 each to David, mm. Ryan, me, Ben, Evan. It was Trek. like seven of us. Yeah. Honest <laughs> mistake. Honest mistake. That'll happen, though. That's the cost of doing business sometimes. But when we went on our first go, so Gold Creek is in uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. It's really the only uh, intense single track that we've done, but <laughs> so, and it's, it is intense. And uh, I remember we took Ryan, and Ryan's not really much of a dirt biker, and he, you did great. Not and, a dirt biker. Yeah, I, I, my first guy. trip, I had literally never guy. ridden a dirt bike. For more than an hour. Yeah, yeah. other than around the driveway. And uh, that was the f- that was the first time that we met Evan. I know we mentioned that a little oh, bit, yeah. but so David texts us and goes, "Hey, you know, I'm originally from La Cloquet, and I have this buddy that I went to high school with, and he loves dirt biking. You guys know that." And we're like, "Sure, yeah, he could tag along with us." And he's a quiet kid before he <laughs> knows you. And so yeah. we drive twenty hours out to Coeur d'Alene, and he probably says like ten things the whole time. And we're like, "Yeah." But he drinks twelve teas. Yeah, he mm-hmm. drinks twelve teas and just gets ripped. And <laughs> we uh. <laughs> Gosh, dude, uh, little did we know that he's probably one of our best friends now, as are you. Little did we know that you, we, we thought you were just going to be our coordinate, coordinate guy at 509, but now you're, like, legitimately one of my best friends. Likewise. Well, but what are the odds that two guys from Cloquet, Minnesota, like, weasel into this group yeah. somehow? And Very now, weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now it is where it is. And why do, you, why do you think it went from, like, a corporate relationship of just us working together from a brand standpoint to us being homies? I think just so like-minded. Yeah. Like, I mean, I we're, that I th- way with all the riders, almost all the riders. We're really good at what we've learned in all these trips at work and play mm-hmm. and combining the two and knowing when to draw the line and then going back home and kicking ass, right? And there's not many people that do that. Either they fall off one end or they're strictly dedicated to work and they have no social life or they have way too much of a social life and they have no job. And it's hard to balance those things and you got to have fun, but you also got to leave you know with mission accomplished and then also we're all absolutely hilarious that's a huge bonus <laughs> <laughs> we're pretty funny when we get to get like us and then you and trent yeah i don't know if funny. other people think we're that funny yeah. though, <laughs> no we're the funniest guys we know for sure <laughs> yeah. but you want to kill us like 90 percent of the time that we're together just because of your time management holy shit man like i think the last time i wrote with you in wyoming this last year you were like two hours late. The first day was brutal. You were li- like, you guys, I haven't I got been heated. pissed. I, at, yeah. I haven't been actually upset with you in, until right now. Like, if there's any time, I'm upset with you guys. I don't know what happened, like, the series of events for you to be that late. There wasn't much going on. It was just mundane things like get in the truck, drive there, stop at the gas station. But Ben was just slow motion. Things do take a while, though. And for us, for everything we do. Ross Robinson's with us, and then Trent and myself. We're in the parking lot. I've been geared up for like an hour, fully geared up. And I got there 15 minutes late. And I called Ben, like, what are you doing? Oh, we're coming, Playboy. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> and that just gets yeah. me going. And that just, like, <laughs> tees me off even more. And he goes, five minutes away. So then Ryan, years ago, don't undo this, shared his location with me. So I still have it. And I'm like watching them at this gas station. And he's like, be there five minutes. 20 minutes passes. You guys haven't gone anywhere. Then you finally get there. And I'm like, just get your gear on. Let's go ride. 
the video comes out and I see this like montage of you guys just dicking off at the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> ben, ben had it's to funny. mess with Uncle Buck a little bit. Yeah, it's it was funny. And meanwhile, I'm I right in the parking lot and you guys are literally doing nothing. We're being entertainers, man. I get we got to keep the people entertained. I get that, but I'm just like, I want to ride and you guys are, I don't know what yeah. you're doing. That's, yeah, that's, 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 a that's the issue is we're entertainers first and snowmobiling Second, it's just part of the trips now. I just I'm aware it's going to happen, and you guys you know. are, but you still get so mad. I know, but you guys know that's going to happen also. <laughs> so and then yeah. Trent's always like the mediator of me going. Trent, he's back and forth. What's going on here? And he's like, "What do you mean? What's going? You guys are two fucking hours late." <laughs> <laughs> Trent's already had his lunch in the parking lot because you haven't left yet. Yeah, you know that's just part of it, though. And you've you've started to understand that. Mm -hmm. I still get irritated, but for sure, yeah, it just kind of comes with the territory. I think we've started getting to the point where it's just almost funnier. I know you try, you try, you definitely push <laughs> as, my buttons. As soon as we find out something that just irritates somebody a little bit, uh -huh. we're just like, "This is it." I'm gonna Double start. I'm gonna start this. enjoying it. What if I like start enjoying it? Then no. would just the novelty wear off for you? No, we'll just get worse. We'll okay. just like we'll just get later and later, and then <laughs> you'll pretty you're really soon, pissed. Yeah, you'll pretty soon just go. Like, oh. <laughs> I just don't even show up. Yeah, that that would probably teach us. <laughs> Damn, we've really we've really uh, flourished our relationship. Yeah, it's gone a long way. What are you guys? One point two ish now. Yeah, one point two yeah, million, and that was like blink of an eye. Every now and then, I'll call you on like monumental moments, like 500k, like so stoked for you guys. 750. This is wild. Million. Well, da Holy yeah, crap! Like, you hooked it. Look at this. David hooked it this up. This is the this only helmet. million plaque that we got so far. Mm -hmm. he, YouTube. He bad that we didn't get one from YouTube, so he's like, "Well, you guys need something." It is sick though. So this was probably cooler than a million plaque anyway. It means yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. How much time we covered? You want to hit on that goggle? That was cool. We kind of overlooked that. Yeah. It's like so the only collab you guys have really done. A real, I also, let's speak on how you say collab. collab. Yeah, yeah. I've adopted collab. it a little bit, but collab, collab, collab whatever. Collab. Um, yeah, that was our first real brand, like, collab. Should we say it real quick? Three, two, one. Collab. collab. Oh, Ooh. collab. We, uh, we did that goggle last year over Black Friday? Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, same weekend. <laughs> same weekend. <laughs> okay. same weekend. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but then uh, we uh, we were doing the same same thing this year. We got another uh, completely new goggle coming out, which is uh, a dream come true yeah. for us. And you got more of them this year because they sold out really yes, fast. Yes, we got yeah. much more. Still limited, but much more. Yeah. That's same time sick. frame, too, I think. Yep. I think we were originally shooting for heydays, but the classic COVID excuse, trying yep. to get it, everything here. So probably uh, Black Friday time frame. Yeah, we got some sick stuff coming down the pipeline. Hopefully a helmet maybe in the yeah, we gotta have in the that next meeting. year or two. We gotta have Please, that meeting. Uncle Tom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd be sick. And we got for those of you listening that are in the area or tri state area, we will be at Heydays again this year. They didn't have it last year because of COVID and so we're like double, double stoked for it. Everybody in the snowmobile industry will be there. So if you are into snowmobiling, come meet us and everyone else. Even if you aren't, it's Even like if worth seeing. Super fun. Yeah, it's yeah. such a time. good event. If you just want to like eat yourself to death and drink beer, yeah, like, we're bringing there. like a pile of people that have never been. So yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, it's gonna be probably one for the record books. I think. I, I agree. You guys are gonna be so. slammed. Yeah, we gotta figure that out because you can only take so many pictures. Uh -huh. You know, you can only see so many people. So we gotta figure right. out a little, little bit more of a. Same. That's my problem. I, <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't go anywhere now. You know. No, it's just got to be efficient so you can see everyone. It is one of the toughest things about those events. Like the people that come to it, like we want to literally, if we could talk to everybody for an hour, we wish we could, but it's so tough. Like people wait in line. You want to give them a good experience. People keep coming up. So if you come, like we really appreciate everybody that shows up. Yeah. I kind of want to chat about that because I've never cared about the quote unquote fame side of it. 90% of the people that run into me, are stoked on what we've done for the brand yeah. or 509. And the satisfaction I get out of that is solidifying like somebody's passion for the sport. And if they say, Hey, you know, I saw this video you did and I went out and bought a new sled or, you know, my dad and I are riding way more now. Like, that's what I want to hear. I don't care about, I mean, it's still cool. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't want to care about like, love what you do. I'm super stoked to see videos. But when I hear somebody's like, we're a hundred percent committed to the sport now you guys really, you know, sold us on it, and you know, we were spending time with my buddies, been getting out, taking trips, or you recommended this location or this gear set or whatever, and it changed their outlook on the sport. 
Like, that is so satisfying. I know it's different for you guys. You got a little different style of fan base, but I love those interactions. And I always tell people, like, I'll get a message that say, I saw you, I just didn't want to say something. I'm like, dude, let's chat. I don't care if it's July. Mm-hmm. I'm at a gas station. I'll chat about snowmobiling, whatever it is. And it's just, you know, it's rewarding to hear that from people. What's the one dude that came up to you the other day? Oh, god. At gosh. the grocery store? It's in Hermantown, Minnesota, of all places. I'm, I don't live in Minnesota anymore. I'm out in Spokane, Washington, and I was back for a wedding this weekend, and that's why I'm finally visiting you guys. And I stopped at a gas or a, a grocery store to pick up a few items, and this, like, I'd say 55 to 60-year-old man, gray beard, bald, everything. I saw him kind of looking at me, and he finally says, he goes, hey, man, I, I recognize you. And my first thought is, like, maybe from when I grew up here, or you think you know my dad or something like that. He goes, yeah. 509 and like Seaboy stuff. I'm like, really? This guy? But he never references like he has kids. He just goes, huge fan. And his wife comes by and he goes, I told you, honey. <laughs> She's like, I was telling I was telling him there's no way it's him. You can't go up and say that to that guy. Why would he be here? But that diversity in the in the crowd is just awesome. Like never judge a book by its cover. You don't know who's watching you. Everybody. I don't even think he had kids. I think he just genuinely liked what we were doing and was it kind of living vicariously through it? We definitely get stoked when old people, yeah. no, what you know, older dudes or whatever, come say that they watch. We're like, yes, yeah. And especially when they don't have kids. That's an interesting demographic, huh? I wonder what the percentages of that. I think a lot more people than you would think, as far as older and yeah. no children. <laughs> yeah, really. I don't know about the no ch- children aspect of it, but yeah, I mean, so many times people come up to us and that, hey, my son's such a big fan, right? Well, I am. T- uh, can I get a picture too? Right, right, right. It's like, yeah, man. Of course, that's that's awesome. Yeah. You wonder if he just like wants to rub it in his son's face a little bit, or if he like genuinely is that stoked. Oh, I, I found the video of, of the house and after. Oh, oh pull that up. Oh yeah. Oh, oh Mike, you oh, got the. Got oh, oh, <laughs> that's a professional athlete, folks. Believe it or not. God, dude, that's so fun. It <laughs> was my exact response too. I was like, "Oh no, <laughs> hyperventilating." That's why we put the Airbnbs in David's name after this. Go to the one. Go to the one where uh, Mike is getting the haircut. I wasn't. Oh, I was just, oh, I'm uh, getting a beard cut. Oh, beard cut. Ooh, you do oh, not look healthy. I don't look good. Though. <laughs> <laughs> right. Why did we? I do forgot this, about dude. this. Waking up and looking at you, I thought you were like some random guy that spent the yeah. night there. And then the next day, <laughs> so they basically shave handlebar mustache or whatever yeah. into me, and we're all so hungover. Then the next day, we go to Ken Blocks <laughs> and tour the <laughs> headquarters, and it, I, that was a regret. I have, at, a, I have yeah. legitimate like. <laughs> <laughs> He's bleeding. <laughs> Never mind. Not handlebars. Just <laughs> no, a, just a reverse mohawk. So, yeah, this is uh, David's first time in visiting us in Cormoran ever. I'm we sorry. Visit you a million times. That's okay, though. More to come. Uh, we'd love to have you back. We'd love to have you, Evan, and Trent back at the same time. Oh, that would, would oh be Lord. quite legendary. Yeah, I think we should do like a trail bomb get together this winter. You know, bar hop, little lake action. That would be very I'm down fun. for it. That would be yeah. very fun. A little ride along I would, action. I would say, actually, we'll, we'll, we're planning on having a ride out like we did last year. And yeah. please, God, more snow than we had last year, too. All right, bro. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate you. We love you. Thanks for taking the chance on us early on. And look at us now. Likewise, boys. Best some the, friends. Some of the Seriously. best buddies I could ever ask for. So thank you for having me. Love it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts. We appreciate that, too. Or subscribe on Spotify if that's what you're listening to. But that being said, we'll see you guys next episode. Thanks, y'all. I don't know why I said it like that.